Welcome back to Wingnuts, the home of micro maintenance. And on this week's episode, we are servicing and permitting this Eurostar EV97. then so uh, let's take a look at the job so this Eurostar has come in for a permit to fly inspection uh, which we're gonna go through with you it's also come in for a hundred hour engine service and a hundred hour airframe service so uh, I'm gonna crack on with the airframe service first um, we've also got reports of an issue uh, with the calipers so we'll take a close look at that and see what we can find um, but first of all what I've gone and done is printed off the periodic inspection table and so every good aircraft manufacturer uh, will provide you with the scheduled maintenance and this is a permit requirement so this is something that you should be doing and if they are of a good quality manufacturer they will give you a nice worksheet it will be in there they might be uh, a bit difficult to find but I assure you they'll be there and so we've got a few pages where basically we've got to work our way through depending on whether we're doing 25 50 or 100 hours or depending on the inspection schedule of your particular airframe and really all we're doing is reading what it is that they want us to inspect and we are inspecting so there is there is an inspection where we are literally checking the part there is a service where we may need to carry out an element of servicing either replacing parts and there is also maintenance um, with this Eurostar there is also an element of lubrication further down in the maintenance manual a lubrication sheet as well and this is where we at again 25 50 or 100 hours there are certain parts whether it be engine nose wheel main landing gear wing ailerons flaps so on and so forth where bits will need to be lubricated there is also a specified lubricant in which that we need to use at a specific point so that's the job for me today i'm going to get rid of this uh, airframe inspection i'm going to try and point out a few bits uh, that might be a bit tricky hopefully then uh, alan will be able to drop on this plane and he will be able excuse me he will be able to do the permit to fly inspection we don't like to do the work and to do the inspection um, so the first thing for me is i need to see the aircraft so what i'm going to do is spend the next uh, few moments just taking off all of the inspection panels uh, all of the cowlings and covers so that we can see every single component part it's also going to be useful for when it comes to permitting so i'm going to find a safe place where i can put all these parts and uh, strip it back so um stripped it all back so all the covers are now off so we have a nice big pile of covers in a safe area and i've had a very quick nose around the aircraft before i get in it's always nice to just have a quick look uh, before you actually get into the nitty gritty of it and um, nothing's really sort of um, screaming out it's very very nice plane uh, everything seems okay uh, notice a small anomaly on the brake so if you don't know a Eurostar uh, Eurostar off, uh, uses uh, toe brakes so you get differential braking um, and the right pedal has got a lot more travel on it on the toe brake than the left pedal so uh, there's definitely a, an imbalance on the brakes there so we'll take uh, a look at that um, so what I'm going to do is now work my way through the periodic inspection uh, the 100 hour uh, worksheet uh, and see if anything flags up I'll be sure to let you know so just completed uh, a good portion of this so far so we've got into the engine frame and, uh, and the wiring side of things on the front end but then got into the landing gear nose wheel <coughs> excuse me nose wheel and the main gear Away, I spotted that the starboard side 
Um, there's definitely a leak on the caliper there um, and it seems that a lot of the fluid uh, is forming uh, on the brake disc and so I mean obviously we don't lubricate the brake discs uh, so there's a lot of fluid that's on there which would give you little to no, uh, no braking but also whilst I was around there and inspecting um, noticed that both landing gear tyres are cracked in fact one of them um, quite badly so it's going to need a, a new set of boots on this one So on test with the caliper it looked like the caliper was leaking at the piston uh, end so I've stripped the caliper right back but it's been through our parts so I should have had a good clean up uh, and I've stripped it back so that we can take a good look at the washers so that one is that end for there then these are internal um, on that side there but it looked like it was leaking to the front end so I've popped the lower washer out, I don't know if you can see the groove that's just in there. Pop the lower washer out and it's not looking ideal, there's certainly some chunks missing. So what I'm going to do is put together back, see if we can replace all of the uh, O-rings at least and then we'll try it again. Okay, so in terms of airframe service, we've worked our way through the worksheet. Uh, we found a few things uh, that do need to be addressed, which I've already gone through, mainly on tyres. Uh, rubber parts uh, can always be an issue on any aircraft. Um, but other than that, it's in generally very, very good condition. We've worked our way through the lubrication uh, worksheet as well, ensuring uh, that all of that's complete and it's flagged up no fault so what i'm going to do now is hand over to alan so he can crack on with the permit to fly which is a further detailed inspection fortunately a lot of this uh, is things that would be covered as part of the permit to fly but alan's going to drop on it and get into there on some more of the finer details um, and go through it that way first of which is the paperwork So Eurostar came in and it was having a 100 hour service and um, while I was doing the inspection on the hoses, um, it's possibly showing a, a few signs it's got hot at some point in its past. So um, there's the, this was leaking, seeping oil and Quite a few of the coolant um, elbows and at the coolant pump they showed that um, there was some uh, residue around them but also this guy that's normally fitted on the Eurostars um, that's what the oil hose fits onto that was rotating um, so these they're normally supposed to be um, torqued up so like 22 newton meters or, or, or whatever it is um, plus Loctite but um, when the engines get hot of course anything that's sealed by Loctite the Loctite breaks down and then they start leaking so uh, I thought I'm not I can't handle putting it back into surface <laughs> <laughs> knowing that that's leaking so um, I've had to take the oil pump off 
because that screws in and there wasn't enough room to take it off with it still attached to the engine and now I'm trying to reset it with a Loctite but because you can't turn it all the way around until the threads bind you've got to set it just on the Loctite alone and um, that takes quite a long time to set so that's what I'm trying to do now um, yeah I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> And so, in terms of... Oh, you look a bit dirty there. A little bit of a grease on the screen. No, don't do it again. When? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, no, 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 no. Welcome back to Wingnuts, the home of micro maintenance. Ooh, we could have got worse. <laughs> what? How about this? Mmm. <laughs> do you mind me asking you some questions? Yeah. Yeah, you do mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's me and my OCD. As much as as much as these are good fun, I hate it. <laughs> 